but I am uh, uh, I'm really excited about the, the con- size of the congregation. I, I'm going to give you a little report. Brother Terry shared with me before church, and if I get one of those numbers wrong, I'm sure that he will be glad to correct me. But we had 133 in Sunday school this morning. Uh, uh, we had 51 absentees this morning. We now have 151 people that are on the books that call this their church. That means we had 33 guests here this morning, 100 regular people here this morning, and 51 absentees this morning. Now, I'm excited about that. I'm excited about what the Lord is doing right here in New Madrid, Missouri. Amen. I'm excited about what the Lord is doing. Our offerings are good. Our giving is good. And when our giving gets uh, 100%, and I believe it's going to, amen, we're going to be able to do some powerful, tremendous, beautiful, wonderful things in the city of New Madrid. I spoke with our mayor the other day, and I told him, That it is my desire that this church be a light into this community that is downtrodden, that is hopeless, that has taken a huge lick into their lifestyle, and our church is continuing to flourish. And we have drawn people. One of the problems with New Madrid is a whole bunch of those folks from Naranda didn't even live here, even in the surrounding area. Some of them drove 50, 60 miles to work, Brother Pete. The people that work at the power plant, they moved to Sykes, they moved to Dyersburg, they moved to Cape Girada. But this, this church is the one thing in the city of New Madrid that's drawing people here rather than them leaving. Amen. Now, I'm going to say this, and I have said it since I became pastor. We're going to have the kind of church that people want to move. They'll come here to find work just because they want to go to church here. And the Lord is going to provide the work. Amen? Listen. This church is going to make an impact here on this earth and when we get to heaven. I can't wait for that reunion when we get up there and kneel at the feet of Jesus. Uh, Hallelujah. That we worship together for a thousand years. uh, That we sing glory, glory, glory unto the Lord of lords and King of kings. Jeremiah chapter 33, verse number 10 and verse number 11. Praise the Lord. Thank you again for coming tonight. Thank you so much for coming to the house of the Lord. Uh, I I do appreciate everyone that sings and plays and and participates and worships. And and, uh, uh, I'm already looking for room to grow that. Amen. Hallelujah. Thus saith the Lord. Again, there shall be heard in this place which ye shall which ye say shall be desolate without man and without beast, even in the cities of Judah and in the streets of Jerusalem that are desolate, without man and without inhabitant and without beast. The voice of joy and the voice of gladness, the voice of the bridegroom and the voice of the bride. The voice of them that shall say, praise the Lord of hosts, for the Lord is good, for his mercy endureth forever. And of them that shall bring the sacrifice of praise into the house of the Lord, for I will cause to return the captivity of the land as at the first, saith the Lord. I'm going to preach for a few minutes tonight. I've kind of changed my message since service started. And... uh, Right before Sister Casey began to sing, uh, I I felt led to to just do something, and I changed my title a a little bit and uh, added something, and I I may not preach but but a few minutes. But I I wanted to preach to you for a few minutes on I'm working on my praise. I'm working on my praise. 
Dear Lord, I love you, and I love you for your word. I love you for the spirit we feel. I love for the ministry of the music tonight. It was exceptionally good and exceptionally pertinent and, uh, and applicable to where we live today. I really like that line in that last song that says, where there's no shame at. I'm praying, God, that that place can be can rise up and we can be aware that that's where we're at right now. That are the shame. The shame of our past has been obliterated in the blood of Jesus Christ. And I'm thankful for that. And I give you praise for that in the name of Jesus. Turn to your neighbor and say, I'm working on my praise. And you may be seated. The first recorded sacrifice is that of Cain and Abel. Though we do not have the recorded origin of a command for them to offer a sacrifice. However, the custom is very clearly approved by God. From the punishment that was delved out to Cain for an improper sacrifice and also the adoption and the elaboration of the sacrificial procedure by the Mosaic law. It is also clearly declared, excuse me, before the law that there is an acceptable sacrifice and also an unacceptable. To offer the sacrifice of praise was described as such. I have often been, and we're going to touch on Hebrews in a few minutes, but I have often been uh, puzzled or, or, or uh, uh, a little bit uh, 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 cattywampus on the, the meaning of, of the sacrifice of praise. And, and what does it mean to offer the sacrifice of praise? And I want to let you know something tonight, uh, that the sacrifice of praise uh, was purposely described as such uh, because it was intended to distinguish it, brother David from those sacrifices that were commanded by law. The sacrifice of praise is what offered simply because I choose to simply because I want to nobody made me, nobody told me I had to, God did not require it but I decided I wanted to offer it Amen. Jeremiah the weeping prophet We've, we've often discussed how Jeremiah apparently converted nobody on his preaching. He was the least successful prophet in the history of the world. But in Jeremiah, our text is a declaration of the identifying characteristics of a restored Jerusalem. There has been a siege that has taken place and Jerusalem has been torn down. Jerusalem has had her livelihood yanked away from her and her people have been taken into captivity. <coughs> And the destruction of Jerusalem was marked by the loss of the voice of joy, the voice of the bridegroom and the bride, which is a directive of going about everyday life. Their livelihood had been taken away from them. The pleasures of life had been taken away from them. The ability to do business had been taken away from them. And life did not go on as usual. But also to the voice of them that say, Praise the Lord of hosts, for the Lord is good, for His mercy endureth forever and of them that shall bring the sacrifice of praise into the house of the Lord. There will be a restoration of the voice of joy. There will be a resurrection of the voice of the bridegroom and the bride. And it is prophesied, I want you to receive this, it is prophesied that the voice of the praiser will be restored to the streets of Jerusalem. For him that says, praise the Lord of hosts, for the Lord is good, for His mercy endureth forever. And of them that shall bring the sacrifice Sacrifice of praise into the house of the Lord. Here's what we may not have grasped right then. Brother David, if it's praise, the Lord doesn't require it. I said if it's praise, the Lord don't make me praise Him. If He makes me praise Him, it's not praise. Can I get an Amen. amen. It's not praise. If you do it because you think I'm going to be mad at you, it's not praise. If you do it because everybody else is doing it, it's not praise. If you do it because the beat demands it, it's not praise. If you do it out of peer pressure or because it's just that time or because you can't stand the quietness, it's not praise. Can I get a witness? The sacrifice of praise will be brought into the sanctuary. How is it that a people that have no city, that have no name, that have no nation, that have been, uh, the city has fallen in disrepair and is under siege. Uh, there is no bride nor no bridegroom, Brother Terry. There is no voice of joy. And the praisers have all left the building. But yet the prophecy of the prophet 
declares that it will be restored. That it will be restored. The sacrifice of praise is something that is brought into the sanctuary. It is an identifying characteristic of a restored people. And the prophet of the Lord is declaring through prophetic word that it's going to be returned. But how is it that the Lord, how is it that the Lord can speak through his prophet and say that the praise is coming back? When he does not praise himself. When he does not praise himself, he does not need to praise himself. He is the I am. When he speaks or or who he is is inherent. It is elementary. It is in him. He cannot deny himself. He is who he is all the time. There is no diminishing. The sacrifice of praise is going to be brought into the sanctuary. Somewhere. In a hidden place. Maybe like Gideon on a wine press being converted into a grinding mill. Maybe it's like Elijah in a cave somewhere or David that's hid in the caves. I recently read about that. But, but somewhere there's a young fella who has a, has a, a, a boy sheep and a mama sheep and, and they get together and they have some baby sheep and, and he begins, Brother David... To take care of that sheep, to curry its wool, to make sure it's fed, to make sure it's fat, to make sure that, that, it's, uh, that it's healthy, to make sure that no bones. He, he runs his hands over it and, and constantly, and there's Bible for all of this, uh, and, and he, he, he checks its eyes, and he checks its teeth, and, and he checks its wool, and, and he checks to make sure there's no running, and, and he makes, checks to make sure that, that there's nothing running from its nose or from its mouth, and, and he begins to, to raise up that lamb, and, and anytime anybody comes around uh, anytime anybody comes around and, and wants to buy some uh, he says you can have that one and you can have that one and you can have that one but but you can't have this one and somebody might say what for why, why can't you have that lamb why, boy, why, why can't I buy that one I'll give you top dollar for that one it's got good clean wool and boy it's a fat little uh, boy it'd be good on my dinner table and, and I love a leg of lamb and, and with that one I might have four legs of lamb and, and why can't I have that one He said, you don't understand. The prophet said that the praise was going to be returned to the streets of Jerusalem. The voice of joy, the voice of the bridegroom, the voice of the bride. And he said that the sacrifice of praise was going to be brought back. And that right there, I'm working on my praise I'm working on my praise have you thought about it have we have we sometimes uh, I thought about this tonight and please don't stop clapping but but I thought about how clapping is a cover up for when we don't know what to do when there's a little bit too much quiet or, or when there's an uncomfortable discomfort uh, or an uncomfortable silence when somebody finishes singing we can all And fill it up. So don't stop clapping and and don't stop the things that we do. But how many of you have thought about a plan for praise? A pattern for praise. Think about it. A a determination to praise. We look at, re- at praise so much as a, as a response or, or as a, as for a set time. We even call it praise and worship time. But the Bible says uh, when, the, when the, the, the siege has taken over Jerusalem and everybody's been taken away, but there's going to be a restoration. We have some people, Brother Johnny mentioned it tonight, Brother David alluded to it, but Brother Larry even talked about it in his testimony. There are several, I, I called your names out in here this morning as I walked through the aisles of this church uh, who, have, who have had their livelihood ripped away from them and, and who have been under siege uh, by the powers of the enemy. Uh, and I come to tell you tonight uh, that the word of the Lord says uh, that the voice of joy will return to the streets of Jerusalem, uh, that the voice of the bridegroom will speak again. Uh, and the voice of the bride and him that says praise is a little Lord is good and his mercy endureth forever and yea there will be one who will bring a sacrifice of praise into the house of the Lord 
But it cannot be reactive. It cannot be, Brother Terry, that when that old boy returns to the streets of Jerusalem, that he has to go hunting for a lamb. When he comes to Jerusalem, when he returns to the city where the Lord put his name at, Sister Maria, he will bring his praise with him. How many of you have ever thought about working on your praise? How about we say praise the Lord? How about we say hallelujah? How about we say thank you, Jesus? We have so many cliched phrases of praise that come out of our lips. Think about it. A determination to praise. I will praise the Lord. Praise with purpose. I just came up with this. Sitting right over there. About two minutes before Sister Casey started to sing, and I want you to listen now. I sat down and began to type it up, and I thought, Lord, they're going to all think I'm playing words with friends. <laughs> or some kind of silly thing like that. But think about praise with purpose. This is the word of the Lord for tonight. I said, this is the word of the Lord for tonight. You want to be free? You want to be delivered? It's going to be in your praise. I've preached this so many times but there are several folks in here that you're waiting on your miracle to come falling out of the sky and I'm telling you that it's already there it's just in your praise it's in your praise think about it I'm, I'm going to brother Terry I'm going to praise the, about the name I'm going to create a praise. I'm going to work on it. I'm going to build it up, Brother David, about the name of Jesus. I'm going to work on it. I, I, I sat back over there and I started, to, I started looking at some resources that I had. And then I went to Google on the internet and I started pulling up some stuff. Listen here. The name of Jesus means Jehovah is my Savior. Philippians tells us that is a name that's above every name. Isaiah 9 says his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Isaiah prophesied and Matthew tells us they'll call his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted as God with us. Acts 4 and 12 says there's no other name under heaven whereby we must be saved. I'm working on my praise. Oh, I'm not getting good and started yet. His name is El Shaddai, which means God Almighty. His name is El Elyon, which means the Most High God. His name is El Olam, which means the Everlasting God. His name is Jehovah, Makedesh Kedem. The Lord is our sanctifier. His name is Jehovah Jireh, my provider. His name is Jehovah Nisi. The Lord is my banner. His name is Jehovah Shalom. The Lord is my peace. His name is Jehovah Shama, which says Jehovah is there. His name is Jehovah Sid Kanu, which says Jehovah is our righteousness. His name is Jehovah Rapha, which says I am the Lord that healeth thee. He told Moses I am that I am. He told John I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the ending, the first and the last. Hebrew says he's the author and finisher of our salvation. He is the root and the offspring of Jesse. He is the line of the tribe of Judah. And he is the lamb for sinners slain. I'm working on my praise. I'm about to cause trouble. But ladies and gentlemen, we've dropped the ball. You know what we did to stay entertained during church? You know what we did to have fun during church when we were little children? We worshiped. We shouted. 
We danced. We clapped. We leapt. We ran the aisles. We were involved in the service. Uh, you want to know why that's what we did? Uh, it's because we were copying what those that were around us did. Uh, what the grown folks were doing. Uh, they clapped their hands. Uh, they worshipped. Uh, somebody has got to make up in your mind. Uh, I'm going to start working on my praise. Uh, look how many things are about the name of Jesus. Uh, and you know what? Uh, I heard about ten things uh, that spoke into my life. Uh, what about if I begin to praise uh, Jehovah Jireh, my provider. His grace is sufficient for me, for me, for me. Jehovah Jireh, my provider. Is there somebody that needs a blessing? Is there somebody that needs provision? Can I tell you? Why don't you get up on your feet and begin to declare, Jehovah Jireh, the Lord hath provided for me. The Lord hath provided for me. The Lord hath provided. The Lord is my peace. The Lord is my banner. The Lord is my salvation. I am the Lord that he let thee Oh, come on now. My God, have mercy. We got to wait on the right mood. You ain't trying to make love to nobody. You're trying to praise the Lord. You ain't got to wait on the cotton-picking mood to change. You got to get something in your head and something in your heart that says, I know I'm not staying where I'm at. The bridge from where you are to where you want to be is called praise. You can be seated. David said, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make her boast in the Lord. And then he did it. A bullock or a lamb that is personal value brought willingly into the house of the Lord. What happened to our praise? What happened to our praise? I don't think it was up there, and I sure wish it was. But the words to that song they were just singing. Here, my hope is found here on holy ground. Here, I bow down. Here, and there I stood like a fool. And the song is saying, here I bow down. I can't bow down. I look like a fool. I look like a fool if I bow down out there in front of everybody. There ain't even hardly nothing happening. Half the people ain't even standing up while we're singing. No, I'm telling you what I'm thinking. Y'all get off your self-righteous ponies for just a minute. I'm talking about what I'm thinking. Here, my hope is found. Here, on holy ground. Here, I bow down. Here, I bow down. And Brother David, I begin to be overwhelmed with the presence of the Lord. The presence of the Lord. And you know something, Brother Terry? I got to tell you, I ain't never found all the answers in the presence of the Lord. But you know what I found? That a whole lot of my questions don't even matter no more. Because I heard a fella told me about a mama named Blue that went in the back room and she prayed until the Lord brought groceries. Uh, guess what? Uh, he ain't no respecter of persons. Uh, and I have been young and now am old. Uh, and I have never seen the righteous forsaken or his seed begging for bread. You remember this, mama? Set the table, honey. Set the table, honey. There's groceries coming. Come on, I'm talking about a family. I've testified this before. I'm talking about a family. You hear me right now. I'm talking about a lady got to go to work all week, Brother Larry. She's got $3 to her name. She pulls into the pump on Monday morning to get $3 worth of gas. And Brother Ray, it just kept pumping. And it just kept pumping. And when it got to $3, it kicked off because her tank was full. Jehovah Jireh, my provider, His grace is sufficient for me, for me, 
for me, Jehovah Jireh. We've got to get out of our mealy mouth, pity party, and realize I serve the risen Savior. You know what? He might come get me before my right bill is due. And if that's the case, you can take care of it. The trumpet might sound before the end of the month. Think about it. Why? 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 I've had our praise team come ask me. Part of the problem with the praise team is y'all show up around here and mill around to come up here early and get on your face before God and get the anointing flowing. They ain't going to respond till you start putting more effort into it. But you listen to me right now and you listen well. What in the world happened to our praise? We got unbelievable beautiful songs. They sing, oh, don't get you tight on me. I want revival. I want people delivered. I want to have service where we hang from the rafters. I want to have people getting the Holy Ghost ever service. Why in the world did they get tied in here when I tell when the two minutes before service is starting, y'all talking about what kind of clothes you got on? Oh, there went everything. Just killed it. Let's stand. I just will close. Y'all want me to? Y'all got nervous as a you-know-what in church right then. And the only thing they could think of, Brother Ray, is let's get out of here. And he'll forget about this by next service. But no, I'm not going to forget about it. Because the Holy Ghost has told me, Here, my hope is found here. On holy ground here, I bow down. Here, I bow down. And you know something? It don't matter if you got it. It don't matter if you got it. It don't matter if you got it. There's something so beautiful about my praise. When I fall down and I bow down, he meets me there. And it ain't got nothing to do with you. It ain't got nothing to do with them. It ain't got nothing to do with nobody. too late to intimidate me. I ain't scared of narrow one of you. You know what? I told y'all I'm writing me a bunch of songs. I'm saving them up. I've done the praise sing before. I pray sing. I played the drums. I even played the piano one time and led all the services. I don't want to go back to doing that, Brother David, but I'll be I'll be coming a long way before we keep on having church when people got their arms crossed and falling asleep when we're singing that song. I said it. Yes, I did say it. We were born in the flame of a Pentecostal fire. I came up with bobby pins hitting me in the face while I was sleeping under the pew. I came up with people running through walls. I saw it happen, Brother Terry, where we got to get out sheetrock the next day and fix them. I saw my daddy jump over clean over a woman's head because she was standing in the aisle and he was running the aisles. I came up on Holy Ghost Throwdown Church. You say, well, what if you don't preach? You don't worry about me preaching. I preach six days a week and twice on Sunday. But I'm going to tell you what, we're going to praise the Lord. We're going to clap our hands. We're going to jump up and down. And we're going to lift our voices. You ain't never going to find me ever, 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 ever. I might kick their little behind if they get out running around dropping candy in the floor and all kinds of crazy stuff. But if them babies want to run the aisles, uh, if they want to spin around and do the brother bunch, uh, if they want to jump up and down and clap and holler and lay down up here on the altar, if they do- think they're doing something for the Lord, I'm going to let them do it uh, because we're going to raise up a church uh, that wants to praise the Lord uh, any way they can. I asked the Lord to let me not be mad while I was preaching, so I ain't mad. I have faith. He answered me. But I'm going to tell you what. Boy. I don't know what you think this is. 
But this ain't nothing about keeping no beat. I got this one in the Bible, Sister Maria. You know what? I, I read it. I'm going to read it in a few minutes, and I'm not going to preach much longer. But David said something about blow the har- blow, play the harp. I can't play no harp. I can't get the radio to come in very clear. David said something about blow the trumpet. I can't do that. I got a shafar in there. I can't blow it. But you know what I found out? You know what immediately came to my mind? A tambourine rolls up in the back of my mind. You know what I can do? You know what I can do? I'm praising the Lord. I'm praising the Lord. You know what? Miriam. Miriam, Miriam began to shake her tambourine before the Lord. Asaph made a sound with cymbals 